Dobrodošli u Al Jazeera svijet. Ja sam Azra Hadžić, a ovo su priče koje izdvajamo. Kontrola publike i sigurnost na mundialu u Kataru pomoću umjetne inteligencije. Ova tehnološka rješenja trebala bi postati uobičajena na utakmicama širom svijeta. Jeste li čuli za pangoline? Kako pomoći sisaru kojim se u svijetu najviše ilegalno trguje? Prividni bijeg od surove stvarnosti. Ukrajinski glumci i publika okreću se pozorištu. Budući da su na svjetskom prvenstvu gužve, Katar je osmislio tehnološko rješenje kako ih kontrolirati. Tim ljudi ne samo da nadzire i predviđa tok okupljanja navijača na stadionima, već upotrebljava vještačku inteligenciju kako bi upravljao događajima. Izvještava Osama Binja Vejt. Iza ekrana u ovoj dvorani bruje neposredne sajber prijetnje. Dvije stotine hiljada integrisanih jedinica i daljinsko upravljanje svih osam stadiona na ovogodišnjem mundijalu. Više od stotinu ljudi radi danonočno u centru za komandu i kontrolu Aspire, kako bi sve od kontrole temperature do ulaza na stadione, odgovarajućih redova i tekuće vode, teklo glatko. In addition to systems integration and the ability to control stadiums, what these tools also allow is facial recognition. In this case, us entering the stadium just a couple of days ago. Ovo smo moj kamerman i ja kako ulazimo na stadion Lusail u vrijeme vježbi sigurnosnih snaga. Mogu uzumirati svako od 80.000 sjedišta na stadion. Osim prepoznavanja lica, vještačka inteligencija koja pomaže u vođenju centra omogućava im da predvide gužve i riješe problem pretrpanosti. Tehnološki stručnjaci u centru kažu da prikupljeni podaci omogućavaju bolji uvid u analizu i predviđanje obrazaca stvaranja gužvi. We have the crowd control team and you have our security staff on the ground and we have the law enforcement agencies and we are complementing their decision making with data. So that's, that's very unique. Organizatori žele izbjeći ovakve prizore. U maju je u Parizu nastao haos kada je policija upotrijebila suzavac i biber sprej protiv navijača koji su pokušali ući na finale Lige prvaka. Nedavno je 125 ljudi ubijeno u naguravanju u Indoneziji, do kojeg je došlo kada su navijači ušli na teren, a potom pokušali pobjeći kada je policija upotrijebila suzavac. Organizatori u Kataru kažu da uče iz ovih incidenata kako bi se izbjegli takvi scenariji. Some of the members of this team have been here since the 2006 Asian Games and now with the help of all the gadgets they could get their hands on, including 22,000 cameras, they say this is the future of how sports is going to be covered. U Katar svakodnevno dolaze i odlaze hiljade navijača. Utjecaj putovanja tako velikog broja ljudi na okoliš jeste ogroman, ali organizatori su i dalje uvjereni kako će ovo biti prvo ugljenično neutralno prvenstvo ikad. Detaljnije, Nataša Gonein. Emisije ugljen dioksida dostigle su rekordan nivo prošle godine. Prema nekoliko indeksa, Katar je u vrhu globalno kada je riječ o emisiji CO2 po glavi stanovnika. Ova zalivska zemlja obavezala se da će biti domaćin prvog karbonski neutralnog svjetskog prvenstva ikad. Zbog blizine terena navijači će kada slete u Katar putovati relativno kratko metrom, električnim autobusom ili autom na utakmice na stadionima izgrađenim imajući održivost na umu. 
Nakon što se završi futbolski spektakl, emisije CO2 tokom 28 dana bit će kompenzovane ulaganjem u karbonske kredite. Ali u izvještaju Carbon Market Watcha kaže se da je katarski plan za karbonski neutralno prvenstvo zavaravajući i zasnovan na onome što se naziva kreativnim proračunima. It is highly unlikely that this World Cup is going to be carbon neutral. It is not a credible claim and there is a big risk that it's going to mislead the public into thinking that this has no impact on the climate when actually it definitely does. The organizing committee says Qatar's historic ambitions should be recognized, not criticized. It points to the almost 1 million square meters of green space created and a new solar power plant that will generate renewable energy for years after the tournament ends. We stand by our uh, planning, we stand by our calculations, and we stand by our plans to offset what's remaining um, in the best possible way with the best information that we have. Tim sa Katarskog univerziteta postavio je stanice za praćenje vremena i svakodnevno tokom svjetskog prvenstva dijeli s navijačima informacije o kvalitetu vazduha. Nadaju se da će time proširiti svijest o uticaju koju imamo na klimu te kako smanjiti svoj karbonski otisak. Širom Armenije medvjedi se drže u zatočeništvu u užasnim uvjetima. Zatvoren je u malim prljavim kavezima, često se hraneći ostacima hrane i ustajalom vodom. To je tužno nasljeđa armenske prošlosti i sovjetske ere kada je bila stvar prestiža držati egzotične životinje u privatnim zoološkim vrtovima. Jedan entuzijasta u planinama Armenije vodi organizaciju za spašavanje i rehabilitaciju medvjeda i zatočeništva. Njegov tim spasio je 30 medvjeda u samo pet godina, ali sada se suočavaju s nekim od svojih najizazovnijih misija. Detaljnije u kratkom dokumentarcu Marije Wilson. where there is no law enforcement and mafia network and trafficking to implement a project like bear rescue means you have enemies it means that you are working you are changing something so good luck to us either it will be a fight either it will be a success and how when again we are arching the nag of so i always like fighting till the end Hello everyone, I'm broadcasting from Armenia. We are here to rescue a brown bear. Bears we are finding in very different places like restaurants, gas stations, backyard of villagers. We are talking about 80 bears in captivity in Armenia. A bear can live there on his own feces like years. It's actually started when the Soviet collapsed. People started to feel free what they want to own and there were no laws which could control and limit ownership. He doesn't want to give the bear. He says he has all the rights for the bear. Let's see what he got the bear for his lunch. Coca-Cola and candies. Part of it can be a symbol of power, part of it because they believe they love animals. Some of the bear owners definitely breeding uh, with the purpose to trade and uh, they are involved in trafficking. First time we are going to try uh, make them busy with coconut. <laughs> They need to be motivated and they need to find something new in their enclosure every day. That's mimicking the normal tree in nature. It's the type of enrichment for a bear. One of the skills to jump up and hang it. When you rescue a bear, there is different things that you need to think about. Dental problems is one of the major problem because of the malnutrition and also biting bars and fences. Almost all of them have lots of mental disorders because of being for a long time in a small cage. 
when we see them coming out of that bad situation, step by step, they're growing up normal behavior, and they do lots of normal things that the bear do. I think that's the best part of our job. When the Great Bear Rescue Project started, we started with the rescues who were easier to be done. But next phase, we are dealing with some owners that don't want to get rid of their bears. Each bear rescue is going to be more hard. Yeah, it will be great, Iman, if you can see if we need extra preparation for the rescue. Yeah, that's really necessary to be able to see the bear first, to see if there is any health issue that we need to be worried about. Okay, we are here. Let's go. 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 Do you sell it to the world? But I'll cheat this thing. Yeah. Set up an athletic time to take the highest program to put it. Push me about my chem on So he's not letting us in. None of us? None of us. Do you not smell how much in the Dallas? What we can do, maybe we can go up and from there uh, we can see the maybe bear. Maybe can have a view yeah. to the enclosure. Do you know why they are keeping the bear in this situation? I think it's a lack of knowledge, lack of understanding. So you can see the bear moving. You see? Yeah. It's there. That's visible. Do you see any type of change in the enclosure? Maybe from 10 square meter, it became 30 square meter, but this is the only change. You feel responsible for those animals. I feel like they need an ambassador. Nelson is located in Paradise Park. There is no place for hibernation, no place for running, no place for enrichment. According to what we were told by the owner, Armen, uh, Nelson is 30 years old. The body condition is not really normal because it is shorter than normal browser. Nelson have cataracts in both of his eyes, which can cause the animal to be completely blind. The most sad part of it is the children who are going there and seeing animals in those conditions, and they think this is how to interact with wildlife. One needs to be very creative from case to case. The approach of how to deal with the owners it's very difficult because a man who struggled 30 years to build something, he don't want to accept that there is something wrong in his premises. This poker clinic is in the middle of the night. It's in the middle of the night. It's in the middle of the night. It's in the middle of the night. If you let your bear, Nelson, come here, we are promising you to take care of him the best way possible. Yes, he has no doubt. 
Et amına karı vur pahna vur mez miyatsın lahıda vur esor du nayev ekelestir. Dranur nayev apat sütfuma vur du irakanum ha irakanum şatır tatsav şat mı virvat ve şat uğraşın dranamar vur kes esor stepesine mağmencaş. Nora kalan gerekir. Kendi açtı lav gine sarhoş gine s kotaganeri he terekhi he tantanik Drinking together and telling the truth. This is the Armenian way of vodka diplomacy. That's, that's great. <laughs> so it will work. Armin John Barry Lewis. Barry Lewis. Won't say you're five. Հիմա <gülüyor> մենք <gülüyor> 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 He was very defensive. He agreed that we can go and check up the animals there, but not take the bears because he believes he keeps the animals in very good condition. It's the most challenging rescue we had ever. So these are the letters to Santa Claus for Nelson Bear. It's part of our educational campaign. The kids learn about Bear Nelson and they ask Santa Claus to take him out from a cage and give him a better life. I'm kind of shocked from today's uh, talk with him because I didn't really expect that after all these talks and presenting him this place, he could refuse in this way. Actually, it's not a Nelson which is blind, but he is blind. It doesn't matter if he agrees or not, we will keep fighting for Nelson. We will go till the end, till we finalize all the rescues and we solve the issue of captive bears. Pangolini su životinje kojima prijeti istrebljenje. Ponekad ih zovu ljuskavim mravojedima jer su jedina vrsta sisara čije je tijelo prekriveno ljuskama. Svjetski fond za divlje životinje procjenjuje da je više od milijon novih sisara bilo predmetom trgovine u deset godina. Ali pojedini konzervacionisti posvetili su život naporima da ih ponovno sposobe za život u divljini. Emily Angvin izvještava iz Južne Afrike. Ovaj južnoafrički pangolin ima nadimak bamper, udarač. Zaplinjen je tokom tajne operacije i jedan je od mnogih koje dovode veterinarki Debbie English. So a lot of people first of all don't know they exist and they don't really understand how endangered these little animals are. Kada dođu na ovu kliniku, već im je očajnički potreban tretman. More often than not they are emaciated, dehydrated and most of them have pneumonia when we when we receive them. Ove životinje drže u veoma lošim uvjetima prije nego što ih prodaju na crnom tržištu. Čuvaju ih u prtljažnicima, vrećama i plastičnim bačvama danima ili čak sedmicama. Jedan pangolin može dostići cijenu od 15.000 američkih dolara. Njihovo meso i ljuske od keratina koriste se u tradicionalnoj afričkoj i azijskoj medicini. It's the most traded of the illegal wildlife animals currently and that's why it's taken over from the rhinos in a big way. Ovo je tajni agent radne grupe Afrički pangolin koji se pretvara da je kupac. And once we've put the deal together, we'll set up a time and location where we do the transaction and this is where the sting operation will go down. Trgovcima divljim životinjama prijeti do 10 godina zatvorske kazne u Južnoj Africi. Pangoline zapljene i odvode u rehabilitacioni centar na tajnoj lokaciji. 
So it takes a long time medically to get them back into a position where we can release them. Um, so some animals are here for a month and then some nearly a year. To je proces intenzivnog rada. The challenge with rehabilitating these animals is not just the enormous cost that's involved, but it's also the time that's required. South African pangolins won't eat in captivity, and so they need to forage for food for up to six hours a day. Emma vodi tim osoblja i volontera, iako je krajnji cilj vratiti ih u divljinu. Konzervacionisti kažu da to nije dovoljno. In every one that we save and the time that we save that, hundreds and thousands are being poached in that time. We're not talking a matter of 10 years, they'll be extinct, we're talking a year. They are shy and secretive, they don't hurt anybody, but yet we're destroying them. Ovu kliniku ne financira vlada i tajni agent radi besplatno. It's for each and every person, every citizen, every person to actually protect the wildlife because we are protecting it not for ourselves but for our future generations. A bumper, on je pušten u divljinu. Jedna je od rijetkih uspješnih priča u ovoj kampanji za spas pangolina. Pozorište je mjesto koje ljudima inače pruža priliku za bijego od svakodnevnog života. No, to je mnogo teže u Kijevu gdje su pocitnici na rat posvuda. Uprko s opasnostima, glumci su nastavili nastupati u predstavama pred publikom. Mohamed Džamđum ima priču iz ukrajinske prijestolnice. U ovom pozorištu u Kijevu počinje generalna proba. Dva iskusna ukrajinska glumca prolaze kroz scene. Zapamtiti dialog bilo je lako. Održati fokus ipak nije. В один момент якась ракета може з дуру залетіти десь поблизу від тебе і все закінчиться. Все закінчиться. Međutim, za sve uključene, rad na predstavama mnogo je više od glume i popratnih poslova. Sam fakt toho, що ми продовжуємо, продовжуємо грати вистави для нашої публіки, це... Dok reditelj daje upute glumcima, prepričava kako je pozorište u podilu poznata kulturna institucija zatvoreno zbog ruske invazije te ponovno otvoreno ljetos. I mi bili zadovoljni, što gledači, ti, ki zališali se v Kijevi, pišli v teatri, počeli kupovati knjih. Nekoliko sati kasnije u istom pozorištu postavlja se još jedna predstava. Međutim, prekinuta je i prije početka. So we've just gotten another reminder of how things can change here minute to minute. Uh, people had come out to see a play tonight. The audience members were going in to take their seats and then the air raid sirens rang out again uh, over Kyiv. And so they were directed to come back down here into the lobby of the theater where they must sit until they're given the all clear. Organizatori su odlučni da neće dozvoliti da trenutne okolnosti unište prijeko potrebnu priliku za izlazak. Važljivo tomu što se... Відволікає, відволікає від, від небезпеки, відволікає від... Kada predstava konačno počne, obećava publici putovanje. Međutim, za nekoliko minuta ponovno se oglašava sirena. Za glumce i publiku čarolija možda jeste privremeno prekinuta, ali duh otpora i dalje je tu. Bilo je ovo još jedno izdanje Al Jazeera svijeta. Naredno druženje zakazujemo za sedam dana. Pratite nas na portalu i YouTube kanalu.